grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let's pause and examine our conscience and ask Jesus for his pardon and his peace. You were sent to heal the contract of heart. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call us sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Pray. Grant, Almighty and merciful God, that we may in truth receive a share in the resurrection of Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The crowd in Philippi joined in the attack on Paul and Silas, and the magistrates had them stripped and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After inflicting many blows on them, they threw them into prison and instructed the jailer to guard them securely. When he received these instructions, he put them in the, in the innermost cell and secured their feet to a stake. About midnight, while Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God as the prisoners listened, there was suddenly such a severe earthquake that the foundation of the jail shook. All the doors flew open, and the chains of all were pulled loose. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors open wide, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, thinking that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted out in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, we are all here. He asked for a light and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you and your household will be saved. So they spoke the word of the Lord to him and, and to everyone in his house. He took them at that hour of the night and bathed their wounds, and then he and all his family were baptized at once. He brought them up into his house and provided a meal, and with his household rejoiced as, as to having come to faith in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our response, the right hand saves me, O Lord. Right hand saves me, O Lord. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. Because of your kindness and your truth, you have made great above all things your name and your promise. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. 
Your right hand saves me. Your right hand saves me. The Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Alleluia, alleluia. I will send to you the spirit of truth, says the Lord. He will guide you to all truth. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Now I am going to the one who sent me. And not one of you asks me, where are you going? But because I told you this, grief has filled your hearts. But I tell you the truth, it is better for you that I go. For if I do not go, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world in regard to sin and righteousness and condemnation. Sin, because they do not believe in me. Righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and you will no longer see me. Condemnation, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus understood something his disciples did not yet comprehend. He had to return to the Father so that the paraclete could be poured out. When the Spirit came, their hearts and minds were, would be transformed and their vision of heavenly life clearer. As we hear in the scriptures, this inner transformation would take place in a threefold way. First, the Spirit would convince the world about sin and that believing in Jesus. Sin, because they do not believe in me, verse 9. Second, the Spirit would show how Jesus' resurrection and ascension proved him righteous and cleared him of any charges against him. We hear in verse 10, righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will no longer see me. Finally, the Spirit will prove to the world that Jesus defeated sin and Satan by his death on the cross and freed humanity from the bondage of sin. Verse 11, condemnation, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. The Spirit came to do a heavenly work to convince the world of heavenly realities. Through the Spirit, God wants to re restore us to his fullness and help. He didn't send the Spirit just to fix us up a little, but sometimes that's all we seek. Sometimes we can be quite happy with just a little revelation from the Spirit, or with a few sin patterns that might be healed, but we're not sure we want to, the full work and restoration of the Holy Spirit. It might be helpful to ask ourselves some questions. How much am I willing to allow God to touch my life? Do I want to restore myself fully to himself? Or am I satisfied with just some minor improvements? Do I fear if I let the Spirit do too much, I won't end up happy or fulfilled? Can I trust that he only wants to deliver me from sin so that he can fill me with love and peace. The Spirit will transform us. Our attention is shifted from earthly things to heavenly things. We witnessed the disciples were so changed that no persecution, no jail time, no quarantine could daunt them. They devoted themselves to Christ with wholehearted love. Such is the change that will take place in us if we invite the Holy Spirit into our lives and desire the fullness of his presence. Come, Holy Spirit.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. You bid us we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work with human hands, to become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. You bid us we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work with human hands, to become our spiritual bread. Brothers and sisters, if I sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful, for his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they claim. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You're indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. simple way. When supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. history of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Douglas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, 
who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. They praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. At the Savior's command and far by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. And by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory of yours. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. I am God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. I am God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. I am God, you take away the sins of the world. Friends. sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, so shall it be. spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Amen. Amen.